Grant Smith was born to be an entertainer. He was the front man for E.G. Smith and the Power, later known as Grant Smith and the Power, a hip, funky rhythm and blues group that hit the Canadian singles chart in 1968 with Keep On Running. Grant first discovered R&B during his early teens. When I was, I guess, about 13, I inherited my, my brother's, my older brother's bedroom and uh, all the accoutrements that went along with it, such as an old Seabreeze record player and his record collection. One night, probably 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, I was laying there trying to sleep and I could hear music. And it was really faint. And it just, I, I kept thinking, where's that coming from? Where's it coming from? I knew my parents were asleep. Uh, the bedroom window was open, so I stuck my head out the bedroom window to see if there was something happening outside. Couldn't hear anything. And as soon as I pulled my head back in, the record player was directly underneath me, I could hear the music. And I couldn't really quite make it out. But then I picked up the tone arm, and back then the, the, the arms were made of metal. And when I picked up the tone arm, the sound came in clearer, and I realized I was listening to a a song. I could hear the lyrics and and uh, it was it was just a great rhythmic song and uh, then I realized when I touched the needle it came in even louder. So <laughs> I figured out that if I got this copper wire that I had for whatever reason in my room and wrapped it around the terminals on the tone arm and put it in my mouth it really came in so clear that I could hear the, the all the lyrics and I could hear all the instruments and it turned out I was listening to WLAC Nashville, Tennessee, bouncing out the stratosphere. So I used to lay there at night with this wire in my mouth, listening to uh, all the old R&B artists. And, and it, was, it was just an amazing experience for me. And that's when I really discovered R&B. Grant coasted through several jobs before he landed the gig that started him on the path to success. I got kicked out of school unceremoniously um, as soon as I turned 16 I got the word uh, was no longer my services were no longer required in the educational system I was uh, quite happy to stay at home lay on the couch and watch TV and uh, of course my mother got on my back seriously about getting a job my mother told me they were hiring at a place called uh, London and Petrolia Barrel which made uh, stainless steel barrels and coke containers uh, so I went down just to just to put in an application for a job and um, I remember somebody coming through a door and looking at me saying are you a welder and I went uh, yeah sure so I ended up uh, being put on a welding machine and um, it took them about a week to realize that uh, I wasn't a welder because every time there was a coffee break or lunch hour I used to take all the product that I destroyed and distributed evenly through everybody else's stacks <laughs> and uh, finally Basically, to preserve my life, they, they let me go. So once again, I was laying on the couch watching TV, and I remember my mother coming in from the kitchen, and she had a little ad that she'd cut out of the newspaper, and she put it in front of my eyes, and she said, um, if, you don't get, if you don't get this job, you're still going to have to find another place to live. And I looked at it and it said, drummer wanted for comedy rock and roll band, must be willing to travel. So great, I went to the audition and um, got the job, and... The following week, I was on the road. That comedy rock and roll band was called The Missing Links. Grant was with them until a car accident in 1965 ended his drumming career. So he laid down his drumsticks and picked up a microphone. Couldn't sing. I was called the singer, but it was more uh, controlled yelling, I guess, is what it was at that time. But I moved so fast and I was such a dancer that people really didn't mind that I couldn't sing very well. Being on stage is probably the best place in the world for me. No matter what else is going on in my life, as soon as I walk on stage, it all goes away. I just, uh, I love it. And of course, having, you know, a couple of rows deep of pretty little teenage girls didn't hurt at all. Grant knew what he wanted in a band, so he hired the best musicians he could find and created one of the most colorful groups in Canada. I was always Mr. Showman and showbiz, so uh, I determined that I wanted the brightest and most garish costumes for the band. We got orange suits for the band. I used to wear a variety of colors, but uh, we had choreography, and it was a good band, and uh, we developed a real serious following. 
Grant Smith and the Power was launched. In 1968, Grant Smith and the Power entered a Toronto recording studio and emerged with a hot album and a hit single called Keep On Running. I had just come off the road. I, I, I'd been, been uh, working pretty hard and my voice was a little raw. And uh, he said, well, why don't you lay something down? And I thought, well, I'd rather not do it today because my voice is a little rough. And he said, no, no, just, just lay it down. We'll use it as a ghost track. And a ghost track was uh, a track that everyone else would use as reference, basically. And uh, so I laid it down, and I really didn't care how it turned out because it was basically just a reference track. And then we spent a lot of time recording the band and uh, got the band finished, and I kept asking him, John, when am I going to do the voice? And he said, well, next week, I'll call you, next week. That went on for several weeks, and then my bass player said, oh, I heard the song on the radio today. It turned into a hit record for us, and I had to hear that thing thousands of times on the radio. I even stopped singing the song. Even though people requested it everywhere I went, they wanted to hear Keep On Running, I would manage to not do it because I had such a bad experience with the, with the recording of it. Grant Smith and the Power quickly progressed from high schools and teen clubs in Canada to bigger and better venues, both at home and in the U.S., including gigs in Sin City itself. I was fortunate in the fact that I was able to make the leap from teenage one-nighters into the nightclub scene. That experience allowed me to move into the club scene in the States, where I, I spent many years traveling through the States working really good clubs. I actually got to open at Caesars Palace the same, uh, same week as uh, Frank Sinatra was there. Uh, which was a huge eye-opener for me. Uh, the guy was so professional, uh, it blew me away. I thought singers were singers and musicians were, were musicians, but uh, he really illustrated to me that this was a singer that was a consummate musician as well. And um, I remember the first night uh, I went, stood up in the light booth and watched his opening night. He walked on, they hit him with a spotlight, and there was this collective intake of breath in the audience. It was unbelievable. It was just absolute silence as everyone went, <gasps> and then huge standing ovation, and all the hair on my neck stood up and on my arms. I'd never had that before. I, I'd heard the word thrill. I'd used the word thrill. I'd thrown that around many times, but I'd never actually had a physical thrill like that. Uh, it, was, it was electricity in the room. Unbelievable. In Vegas, Grant hung out with entertainers Tom Jones, Liberace, and Sammy Davis Jr., among others. He was impressed by the devotion of Elvis Presley fans, so much so that a few years ago, Grant and a partner created a documentary about the Elvis fan. I was never really a big Elvis fan. I was an R&B guy, and um, then I got to see him in Vegas, and I realized, boy, this guy is really good. He's, he just had an amazing charisma. I got to meet him, brief introduction, just one of those arranged things that the entertainment director at uh, Caesars did for me. It was just basically a handshake and that, and, and that was great. Over the years, uh, Elvis's name has come up in conversations with people in a million different ways, and I've always been amazed at how many fans he has. And people that you would not expect to be a, an Elvis Presley fan turn out to be a rabid Elvis Presley fan. It's amazing that the fans he has, how dedicated they are, and, and how much joy he, he, he brings to people, even though he's, he's gone. So um, I decided uh, to investigate the phenomenon of the Elvis fan. And uh, my partner, uh, David Clark, and myself ended up doing a film on the worldwide phenomenon of the Elvis fan. Uh, it's called Mentally Elvis. It's, it's tremendous. It's not a put down. It's a, it's a really positive look at, at the phenomenon of the Elvis fan, all told through their own conversations. And um, they love it, and uh, hopefully uh, a lot of other people get to see it and they'll love it too.
Grant Smith and the Power was an influential group in the Canadian music scene that exploded around the world beginning in the mid-1960s. But Grant says some performers from his era didn't get the respect that they deserved in their home and native land. Canada has a tremendous amount of unique talent. Canadian artists are respected all throughout the world and it's funny because for the longest time guys from my era got no respect in Canada. But in other places in the world, Canada had a really strong reputation for talented, creative people. And uh, that just continues to grow. People are interested in Canada because Canada is always sort of on the edge. You never know what to expect when you get a Canadian. These days, Grant continues to focus on his documentary career and still performs occasionally and every day in every way. He's living his dream. I was one of those precocious kids who teachers had trouble with. Uh, I was a show off. I was the smart guy all the time. And I was always uh, obviously uh, seeking the limelight. And um, when I thought of myself in my dreams of being an entertainer, I always thought of myself as an old guy. Uh, I never thought of myself as a teenage rock star or anything like that. In my dreams, I was always this old guy singing, so it's great, worked out fine, living my dreams. <laughs>